Stevens. <laughs> I'm a great fan of the American Western. It's my favorite genre and it always has been. And uh, I've always wanted to make one, but the, the chances are diminishing very fast for, for anyone to make the American uh, version of an American Western <laughs> because uh, no, nobody will finance such things. So I hoodwinked Robin into allowing me to make a Western. <laughs> No, in truth, um, uh, I, the reason I like the American Western, it, is, it has the, the purest form of, uh, of a moral play uh, ever put on the cinema. It has very few complexities. There's good, there's bad, there's evil, there's the railroad, there's the girl, there's the, the loner, you know how it all goes. Um, and the best of them uh, play around with this moral fable. And I thought that the story we were telling would be it is not in essence a Western, but it shares some of the uh, facets of the Western. Landscape, rugged individuals, um, rugged loners like uh, the patriarch himself, self-made men. But more than anything, I, I thought it was, uh, I haven't seen for, well, we haven't made in New Zealand a, a large format landscape Western, and I'm very, very fond of the anamorphic format, and I wanted to put the landscape as a character once again I love landscapes, and especially the New Zealand landscape. In Once Were Warriors, we were inside an urban jungle, and on this one, I wanted to expand it out. So there are many uh, echoes of the American Western, and including the inclusion of 310 to Yuma, which is, of course, one of my favorite Westerns. And, uh, and uh, the whole scene in the, of the cinema, the Western in the cinema, is really an effect, just it's a, it's a grand, an overblown sequence just so the girl, the, the girl can kiss the boy. That's the, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it was, <coughs> some of it, the, the, the guy driving, dri riding the horse into the cinema was something that happened in my childhood when I was on the East Coast where this film is set. I was about eight or nine, we went to a local cinema and I saw that happen. It's not in the book, but I put it in there. Yes, there are a lot of references to Westerns especially at the end when they're talking about Don Siegel's Flaming Star, if any of you, if you know what they're talking about there, and uh, many other obscure references to Westerns, but I tried to jam as many as I could in there, but there you go. <laughs> That's it. I'd like to know if your generation uh, uh, knows those Western, uh, uh, because you are reciting so many uh, movie titles, uh, so are you self a fan of those movies? Not really. But, um, <laughs> he, he doesn't understand, he doesn't know what those movies are. And I, think, I think that was kind of popular for, uh, I think that was kind of what Witty liked. Um, I think that's why he put it in the book. But um, yeah, I'm not quite a fan of cowboys and stuff. I had, uh, I had Orgs imitate Jimmy Stewart in the movie. You'll be aware of it. He oh, doesn't know yeah. who Jimmy Stewart is or know anything <laughs> about it. I said, look, Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart, talks like this, <laughs> and so he says, just do that again, and I'll copy it, and I said, okay, so I, I did Jimmy Stewart, a Jimmy Stewart Im imitation, he copied my Jimmy Stewart imitation, and the other people think it's John Wayne, and I go, I don't care, it doesn't, whatever, whatever it is, it sounds like it's from a Western, so, what that, that <laughs> I don't but, even know who these, these people uh, are. These films, as, as Woody and Lee uh, talk about them, were, at that time, they were the equivalent of Star Wars, you know, so, so our generation would obviously ref reference and, and recognize Star Wars, but uh, back then it was, uh, it was Westerns, and, and these were largely illiterate communities, they didn't have a lot of reading material, they, they went to the cinema and that's what gave them a window on the, on the wider world and a sense of greater potential. You know, and and Witty, uh, Witty's actual aim in writing Bully Basher was he... Um, He'd, he'd written books before, but he wanted to write a book that his father would really love and be proud of, and his father loved Westerns. So his actual underlying motive was to get his father to read a book that he would really, really enjoy. <laughs> Maybe Lee, could you please say something about the haka at the, at the end of the movie, which is quite short, but I, we, we, see few to, uh, we see really too, too few hakas on screen, uh, on, uh, on screen, and I really like that very much, so maybe you can say something about that. <laughs> Was it a real one, or is there anything like a non-real haka? Or maybe no, it's uh, uh, the, the haka uh, in the Ngeri, which I was discussing before, is... Um, was written for the film. Am I right? Yeah. yeah, it was written <laughs> specifically for the film. Uh, you, are, Many of you are familiar with the haka, the rugby, all blacks, mm -hmm. many of these things. Uh, it's probably... Um, 
The haka is very specific to iwi, hapu, a tribal structure. Um, you can't just misappropriate and use someone else's haka. Um, it's not there as a free-for-all to be used. So w like, as we did in Once We Warriors, we wrote one for the movie and used it. And in this one, we had to do the same thing. It, uh, it's created for the film uh, it's to, to be uh, an aggressive haka to confront uh, the, the, the memory of the, the departed patriarch himself. Um, I don't know, anyone want to add anything? Maybe you would, Tim? Uh, haka, ha is the word for breath. Breath, ha. Ka is uh, light or fire. Haka. We'll give you a little demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Now look what you've done. We are all going to take lessons. Sorry,